In the recent past, most of you might have heard about simulation of the virus infection, how it propagates and how the number of people uh, get infected and some of them die or some of them get recovered, etc. You might have also heard of that curve that looks like inverted bowel U-shape. It's like a normal distribution sort of a curve and uh, we talk about flattening the curve, etc. So how do these people simulate these uh, things? Uh, I will try to explain a very simplistic model, not the one that uh, Imperial College has used, uh, which is most likely, I think, an agent-based simulation. But this one is known as a compartmental model, which means you take the whole population into various compartments, such as the first compartment being the susceptible people. So the whole, whole of population is susceptible initially. Some of them get exposed to the virus, out of which some people become infectious, as in not only they are exposed, but also they can actually infect others. And then those who are infectious eventually get recovered or unfortunately some of them will die. And that's why we're calling them removed. So this four-step model is a compartmental model. And you have to decide on the constants uh, based on which numbers will move from one bucket to the other. Now, this is a sort of model that was used uh, in the paper that you see here on the screen um, that was uh, published in the Nature Journal, published by the Chinese scientists. Very recently, in fact, with the data they collected from Wuhan uh, about the coronavirus. Okay, so they have used this SEIR model, which we are trying to understand. So coming back to this SEIR model, these four buckets of numbers are connected uh, in such a way that these governing equations explain their behavior. Uh, the red box you see in the bottom uh, is basically the sum of all the numbers. If you sum people in all the boxes, that should be equal to the population of the city or the country or the world, wherever you are running the simulation. So that's the N. But there are other equations that are there. We need to understand what do they mean. Let's take susceptible step, for example. So initially, everybody is in susceptible stage and they move into exposed. So how do they move? So we're talking about the rate of movement, as in, in a given unit of time, how many people will move out of susceptible box. And that is given by this minus times, the negative is because it will reduce. It's beta times uh, susceptible number times infectious number divided by the population. That's what it simply means. The rate of change of susceptible box equal to minus beta SI, you multiply those two, divide by the population, you get that rate and use that rate to solve the differential equation. But that's not the only one. Uh, we have to look about uh, look at exposed. Exposed is given by uh, this equation, which is pretty similar to that. It depends upon, obviously, the number of susceptible people and in infectious, but also its own number, the exposed number. Similarly, infectious is governed by the third equation. The rate of change of infectious people is essentially the rate at which uh, the exposed become infectious minus the rate at which the infectious become removed. It's, it's as simple as that. And then uh, the fourth one, obviously, is the removed bucket, which is governed by the four, fourth equation. It is the rate of change of removed, as in it, it basically increases uh, because um, you know, the people who are in the infectious bucket move into remote at a rate uh, determined by the letter gamma. That's all. You have four differential equations. And the fifth one uh, here, this box, a beta equal to R0 gamma is essentially a relationship between beta and gamma. For example, if the beta is higher than gamma, then you have a pandemic sort of a situation because you start the number of people infected and exposed and infected will increase. That's the famous number R0, which is known as basic reproduction number. Imagine if gamma is the gamma is the one on the right hand side, right? So if that number is greater than the beta, the, the left side number, then 
obviously the number of people who are getting exposed is far less than the people that are being treated etc so you know that will die out the infection will die out in this particular paper they have taken these numbers they've taken the Wuhan population to be 11 million and the initial number of infected people to be 40. To start the simulation, you need an initial number of infected people and, and that's why they've taken the number 40. It's an assumption. And then they used uh, the initial number of exposed people to be 20 times as much. Uh, again, that is an assumption they have used in the paper, which I have taken as it is in my simulation, which I will show you. So the initial number of R0, which is the ratio of beta to gamma, is a 3.1 as taken by them. But what they have done in that paper is essentially, after running the simulation through, uh, halfway through, they change the R0 to 2.6 and then they again change it to 2.1, etc. They kept on reducing. What it really means is that they've been taking some actions in Wuhan and elsewhere because of which that rate R0 will be different. And that's what they were trying to do. In any case, I have just simulated, put that number 3.1 and then tried to do it just to see how it works. Okay. Um, the sigma and the gamma are other constants which are assumed to be the numbers that are shown here on the screen. All these numbers are taken from the paper which is published in Nature, um, Nature Journal uh, by you know the named individuals here that you can see on the screen. So this is my this is a snapshot of my uh, R Studio. Uh, this is the code that I have written and this is one of the output uh, graphs charts that uh, it has produced. So this is the result. I, I, I wrote down, the if you, if you look at this, this one, you can see the simulation in loop here on the screen. Uh, first, you solve the first differential equation uh, of uh, the, uh, the recovered, uh, and then you solve the infected, and then you solve the exposed, and then you solve for the uh, susceptible, etc. Uh, you keep on checking the number S plus E plus I plus R equal to 1 at every stage. And then pretty much you develop the numbers and plot them into a chart. And this is what you get. S, E, I, R numbers. So S is the total susceptible people. Uh, as you can see on the y-axis, the total population is about 11 million. And, well, 12 mi yeah, 11 million. Uh, and that number gradually reduces uh, and then flats out. Whereas the number of R, which is recovered, plus people who are dead total removed people that increases and stays constants in the end and this sort of an s shape is because that's how the governing equations behave uh, this curve is known as a logistic curve it increases exponentially and then flattens out in a inverse exponential manner now if you only plot the infected people exposed people and infle uh, infected people you get this famous graph that uh, people have been showing in the news uh, all the time. And they talk about flattening the curve. So this is the curve that they want to flatten. Now, in this case, uh, this is a result of uh, the simulation where I have assumed the R0 to be 3.1. And I have taken no actions, so obviously no actions have taken. I let the simulation run. So nobody has done anything. And then you see the number of infections that are peaking more than 2.2 million or something like that, 2.6 million actually, 2.6 or 2.7 million uh, on uh, around 150th day or something. But, uh, and, and if you actually sum, you take the area under the curve that will give you the total number of infected people. In fact, as you can see, the total number of infected people has in the past, uh, it, has, it has reached a very high number, uh, almost as high as um, a very big number and then eventually they all recover so that means pretty much everyone gets infected and they get either recovered or uh, you know they some of them die obviously uh, and this is in the case when uh, no action is taken no action is taken this is the curve they want to flatten out okay now SEIR is not the only model I think the simplest model is SIR susceptible infected recovered that's the simplest model but then you put in the, another additional uh, box is known as treated and then some another box for dead and so susceptible become infected infected can be either treated and then recovered or some infected people automatically recover over a couple of weeks or whatever some of the infected die directly without treatment and some of them who were treated also die so 
this is a bit a more complicated model. There is another more involved model. I mean, there is no end to these models. There are a lot of people who publish different kinds of models. It all depends on how they uh, chart the graph there. So in this case here, you have these SIR susceptible, in fact, infectious and, uh, you know, removed or recovered, removed. And uh, there are additional three boxes below. Uh, one is uh, the quarantine guys. Uh, some of the susceptible people are quarantined based on the risk profile. Uh, and the T is the treated people among the infectious. And QI is the isolated people among the infected. Because there are, there are some critically uh, ill people who are isolated so that the others won't get infected. So you, you can actually make these sort of graphs in a realistic scenario. And uh, you, know, you have to estimate. I think the accuracy of the model really depends on the constants. Uh, and when you simulate it, you get the right results. And these constants must also change as people take different actions during the pandemic. That is how you can get a model closer to the reality. I hope this was useful. Thank you very much.